Hey, what's up? Like, totally time for 90210. Well, hello, everybody. Welcome back to the 90210 show. My name is Mark. With me, as always, is my fiance, Carol. How are you doing today, Carol? Hey, what's up? How much has been a good week here? It's October 23rd, 1998. It is. Halloween is inching ever closer. I can't wait. I love fall. I love Halloween. It's the spooky season. I th- Halloween might be my favorite holiday. Yeah? Really? I, th- I think so. Hmm. I like Halloween and I like Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is awesome too because, you know, pie, candy, they both have sugar. Absolutely. Must be a favorite for the dentist too. Right, exactly. That's where they make all their money. <laughs> a dentist invented Halloween. Did you know that? Did not. <laughs> The pagans invented Halloween. Come on. Now. Yeah. Yeah. You ever hear the Irish, uh, the Irish, like, myth or whatever about Halloween? No, what? This is the 90210 show again. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to get derailed for a second by uh, by Halloween talk. Um, Stingy Jack was a, uh, a very persnickety fellow. Okay. Uh, this is like you know around the nineteen, uh, the early nineteenth century, late eight, or early nineteen hundreds, uh-huh. like late eighteen hundreds or whatever. Uh, anyway, he was drinking in a tavern with the devil, and true to his name, Stingy Jack did not want to pay, so he said to the devil, "Hey, why don't you turn yourself into a coin? We'll use that to pay, and then you can just change yourself back." And the devil's like, "All right." Let's do it. So he turns himself into a coin, but instead, Stingy Jack decides not to pay at all and puts him, the devil, in his pocket next to his silver cross. Oh, my goodness. Which prevents the devil from being able to turn himself back into his body form. Interesting. So, about like, you know, some time passes, and then Stingy Jack says to the devil, Look, I'll let you go, and he can let you go back to your body. But you have to promise not to mess with me for a year and when I die not to take my soul. And he's like, okay, I pro- you know, I'll do that. So he lets him go back and then, you know, some time passes. Before the year's up, uh, Stingy Jack, uh, you know, meets with the devil again and convinces him to climb up a tree to try to get, I can't remember, some kind of animal. While he's up in the tree, he draws a cross on the bottom of the tree. So now the devil can't get down. And he's like, hey, I'll let you down, you know, but you can't mess with me for 10 years. And you can't take my soul. And he's like, okay. So in the interim, Stingy Jack dies. He goes to heaven, but God doesn't want him. He's (laughs) like, you are an unsavory character, and we don't want you around here. You don't want your kind up here. And so he's like, oh, and the devil decides to keep his word and not take his soul. Hmm. Uh, Condemning Jack to wander the earth where he, in order to light the way and, and, you know, he's like wandering the earth alone, basically, you know, as as a ghost. And uh, he, he hollows out a gourd and puts a, uh, a torch in there to, see his way, people started calling him Jack of the Lantern oh. or Jack-O-Lantern. Interesting. And uh, then, you know, the Irish uh, would carve out gourds and scary faces and put light in there to scare away Jack of the Lantern so that he didn't come to their house. And that is where we get Jack-O-Lanterns from. Wow. I'd never heard that before, which is kind of crazy because I am Irish. Yeah. Hmm. Weird. Yeah. That's an interesting one, huh? Yeah, it seems a little too late, though. Like, you're saying, like, the early 1900s, late 1800s? It might have been the early 1800s. I don't remember. Yeah. I mean, it could have been, like, the fucking 1400s, honestly. No, it was, it was, I, it was sometime in the 1800s, I think. All right. I don't remember exactly when the, it's, you know, like a legend that started. Yeah. I don't remember exactly when it was, but I think it was somewhere around there. Well, thank you for the Halloween history lesson. You're welcome, everyone. Did you enjoy that? I did. Did you enjoy 90210? Yeah, of course. This is a really good episode. (laughs) I know you did. You're just so happy about the fall of Brandon Walsh. The show has gotten better. Yeah, 
I agree. It's 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 pleasing my Schadenfreude. <laughs> what does that mean now? That's a German word that basically means pleasure in the misery of others. Ah, uh, yeah, that's true. Like every couple is unhappy in this episode. Yeah, well, Donna and Joe get happier at the end. Joe, you mean Noah? Noah, whatever the fuck is. Who the is. fuck is Joe? I don't know. Didn't she date a Joe at some point? Or like ten years ago? Sure. <laughs> the fuck. <laughs> There has to have been a Joe on the show at some point. No, I, I think you're right. I think she did date a Joe. Like, he was a football player or whatever. Like, Yeah, you're right. <laughs> but it was a long time ago. Whatever. They're all interchangeable. All these fucking white guys on the <laughs> show are interchangeable. All right. They all look the same. Luke Perry needs to come back. Um, oh, no shit. But yeah, okay, so where do you want to start? I don't know. Dealer's choice. Okay. You want to start with Carly? Sure. This I don't like this story. It's the most, like, it's the biggest emotional punch, everybody. So. Hillary Swank's not going to be on the show anymore. Oh, no. Steve goes to see her at work. Mm -hmm. And he's all excited and talking to her. And she turns around and you can tell she's been crying. And he's like, oh, my gosh, what's wrong? And Somebody didn't leave a tip. Like, <laughs> my dad had a heart attack, and he's having a quadruple bypass. That's in, a lot. It's a lot of bypasses. In Minnesota? Is that where? Montana. Montana. That makes more sense. So she's, like, just beside herself, worried about her dad. We find out that his surgery went well enough. He survived. Sure. But he's going to need, like, what, six to eight weeks of recovery, I think they said. Something like that. So this makes no fucking sense to me. Well, so Steve says to him, to her, why don't you just bring him here? Mm -hmm. And she's like, yeah, he's not going to be stable enough for that for six to eight weeks. So he says, well, I can help you out financially. I can help pay for a nurse or whatever he needs, you know. Yeah. But no, no. No, no. She, oh, crack she, rush, rushes neck open and tip right. him over. <laughs> Get all the money out of him. She's like, no, I have to go take care of my dad. Yeah. Like, I don't want strangers taking care of him. I mean, if you're that close, why did you leave in the first place? I mean, that just... Why does he live in Montana? Yeah. Like, yeah. I, I don't get it. And, like, she's got a good thing going here with Steve. Like, yeah. I know, okay, it's been three months, I guess. That It seems like it's been longer. It does. But... Her kid's tight with him. Yeah. She's building a life. He's, you know, offering to help her financially to take care of her dad. Mm -hmm. Why not let that happen and just keep dating Steve? Yeah, I don't know. It's stupid. She's making a stupid choice. You think, you know, single mom uh, Carly is going to go to Montana and find some dude who's going to take care of her and her kid? No. Seriously. <sighs> Fucking cowboys out there. And poor Steve is just getting left again. Another woman just moving away on him. Yeah, it's weird. But, yeah, I, I mean, I didn't love her character, but I did kind of like them together, at least. I mean, like, I liked him being happy. He deserves some happiness. Yeah. It's like Steve's frequent flyer miles are sexually transmitted. <laughs> so people have to leave. Uh, yeah, so that's, that. they throw her a party, and that's it for the next Karate Kid. <laughs> Do you remember that she was in the next Karate Kid? No. Yeah, she was the next Karate Kid. Interesting. After Ralph Macchio, there was her in the timeline of Karate, like uh, the evolution of Karate Kids. Hmm. It goes Ralph Macchio and then Hilary Swank and I then a robot. Did not know. But like her son's devastated. He doesn't want to move. And then Steve's like, well, you guys will come back when you're done, right? And she's like, well, I don't want to, you know, keep moving him around. Mm -hmm. Then don't move him in the first damn place. Yeah, it makes no sense. It really only serves to get her off the show because I think she's I think she's filming a movie or something like that. I don't know. I mean, you know, whatever, good for her. Isn't that why uh, Luke Perry left? Yeah, Luke yeah. Perry went to to pursue his his film career because they all want to be in movies. No one wants to be on TV. I don't know if she had planned like she they had to have planned for her to be a regular because she I mean, she was a regular, but they had to plan for her to be they're somewhat long term because she's in the credits. Yeah, agreed. So it's, this had to, I, like I don't know the behind the scenes of this, but this had to come like kind of a 
surprise. I mean, I guess if she got a chance to do, you know, I don't know, the next Karate Kid part two, <laughs> the right. next, next Karate Kid or whatever movie she's doing, uh, that this is, it was nice of them to let her go. I guess. To do it, but. I have a feeling whatever she's doing, we'll end up watching it and talking about it and tearing her apart. I can't believe that they wouldn't. Like, she could have done this at the same time, I would think. I don't know. But maybe she, I don't know, maybe her agent was like, hey, you know, this show sucks, right? And she's like, oh my God, it does. It does kind of, yeah. <laughs> that makes sense. Um, So then, I think that, I mean, like, they threw her a party. They got her a fucking, like, cowboy jacket. They got and, her a cake. Uh, yeah. They got her kid a cowboy hat. Do you ever have a cake make fun of you? No. Do you? Do your cakes talk to you? <laughs> Tell me about this. One time I was like, I'm just going to have a small piece of cake on Father's Day. We got a, a cake for my dad that said, Happy Father's Day. And they cut me off a small piece of cake. And it's the H and the A from Happy were there. And then underneath it, the F-A-T from Father's Day. <laughs> so it said, Ha, fat. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that's and I was fucked like, up. Oh, I don't want cake anymore. <laughs> My cake is made fun. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Um. Okay, next storyline. Yes, Carly's gone. We're we're devastated. So like, you think? Do you think in the next episode they're going to take her out of the opening? I she's, hope so. She's still going to be there. I hope so. I don't want to keep looking at her face. Honestly, <laughs> like I, I'm irritated. And her weird pterodactyl arms, or whatever, and, and her horse face. Yeah. Oh my god. Sorry, Hillary Swank. We're sure you're a nice person. <laughs> so, what the fuck's her name? Um, Valerie. Yeah, comes walking in in the How morning. Did I know? How did I know? <laughs> That's where you're going next. And, you know, she's uh, tired and upset because she spent the night in jail. Yeah. And Brandon and Steve are nice. hanging out. Have they already been drinking or are they just, okay, the day is it's just the beginning. Morning, so, yeah. yeah. They're like Brandon, they're watching TV or something like that. But Brandon's just a gigantic asshole. He has, div- he has changed completely overnight into just a fucking piece of shit. He's so bitter. And it's like nothing happened to him. No. He did this to himself. He got to have sex with someone else, too. Yeah. I mean, that's true. You got, I guess, you know, he got more out of it than Gelly than that way. Yeah, for sure. But yeah, I mean, he just hates the world. So she comes in and she's complaining. He's like, oh, you know, who the fuck cares about your problems, Valerie? Like, whatever. Like, just so mean to her. Yeah. Um, it's verbatim what he said. <laughs> I don't remember. Do you remember verbatim what he said? No. Okay, then. It's a joke. Ha ha. <laughs> what are you, a cake? I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> and then, like, later in the episode, he's at work with Steve. Mm-hmm. And David's there, too. Yeah. And Brandon's just in the background the whole time, just, what? I was going to say, the the thing with Valerie, Valerie's like, what's up? And and he's like, uh, fucking, Kelly, Steve says Kelly moved out, and she's like, no way. And it's like, oh, you know, she'll get, like, she'll get back, she's, she's like, I fucking cheated on her or whatever, and she's like, oh, my gosh, I'm so sorry. And, she's, and he's like, yeah, you're a fucking liar. You're lying to me. You hated her. Fuck you. Wow. He's really mean to her. Yeah. I know he was really mean to her, but I didn't remember the specifics. I mean, that's obviously I'm paraphrasing, but. Yeah. Anyway, so then they, he talks to uh, to Kelly's brother. David. Yeah. Yeah. He he tells them all. He's like, I may as well just tell everybody. Like, I, I cheated on Kelly. I fucked her. <laughs> Had sex with Emma. And then he just continues. He's like beating on the copying machine this entire mm-hmm. time. They should bring Emma back. Why? No. Because, like, now he can have sex with her. He doesn't want to have sex with her. He wants to murder her. Oh, come on. You think he would fuck her again? <laughs> Obviously, I think he would. I don't. Oh. So, yeah, he's he's just being a dick. And, like, David says, oh, well, I guess now I know why you're beating the copy machine over there. And he flips out on David. Yeah. Like, that was a wrong thing to say. And then Steve finally sticks up for, for David. He, he was like... Yeah, go ahead and yell at Valerie. Who gives a fuck? <laughs> but with David, he's like, hey, it's not his fault. Relax. And right? Brandon's like, yeah, it's my fault. Everything's my fault. Yeah. El Nino's my <laughs> fault. It's like, but your problems right now are your fucking fault, He's Brandon. such a baby. He is. I love it. I don't. I love the de-evolution of his character. 
It's like he's playing somebody completely different. It's so funny. He's a fucking baby version of Brandon Wall. Yeah. Wah. He's so unhappy. Yeah, I love it. He deserves to be unhappy. He does, though. He was very bad. Yeah. Um. So because Valerie spent the night in jail, mm-hmm. she then goes, how does it happen so fast? <laughs> it's like occurring to me now. Like, this is all the same day, right? I love that. Yes, it has to that is true. I didn't think about that. But yeah, the wheels of justice spin very fast if you're rich, I guess. Yeah, because she's um, like, oh, I'm going to go get um, sentenced. Or? And probe. Um, yeah, sentenced. <laughs> and they sentence her, and she's whining about this, to 500 hours of community service and a fine. I think it's 50 hours. 50 hours? That's it? I think so. It might be 500 hours. I don't know. But yeah, she's like, she's like fucking Noah, all you got was a, your liquor license suspended for a week. Which, by the way, you can't operate for a week. That's kind of big, especially yeah. in a club. Um, but he's like, yeah, because I didn't do anything. Because I didn't know anything about it, you fucking idiot. Yeah, like, she thinks it's unfair. Like, he shouldn't be punished at all, really. He had a, she had a bookmaking operation that was, like, netting thousands of dollars. She's really lucky that's all she got. Yeah. and she, has, she didn't face jail time. I mean, I wonder if the fine she has to pay is even, like... Anything more than paying back the money she shouldn't have had in the first place, really. Ten bucks. Right. But she gets sentenced to community service, and then we find out that the community service is at the clinic that Kelly works at. Why would that happen? Because they're going to force them together. Other than, you know, obviously because it's, you know, funny for the show, haha. But I mean, like, it's so stupid. Like, L.A., Beverly Hills, these are big places. It's so funny. Like, on one episode, we have, like... Just this very serious, like, sexual harassment in the workplace. Right. And it's, and it's, it's a serious topic. We have, like, uh, like on this episode, I mean, I'll spoil a little bit, like, yeah. uh, domestic abuse, you know, and everything. Mm-hmm. And it's, but in the same episode, they're also like, uh, oh, Valerie, you're going to scrub the toilets. Ah! Yeah. And it's like, it's such a tonal fucking nightmare. Yeah, it is. It's weird. And Kelly, like, the only time she looks happy is when she's being mean to Valerie. And the, the, it, it's just an excuse to muss up uh, fucking Tiffany Amber Thiessen's hair <laughs> a little bit. And she's wearing a suit and heels and shit. It's like, what? what why? Well, in her defense, she didn't know she was going to be sweeping and shit like that. What did she think thing. she was going to do? You don't show up to do community service in a nice outfit. Oh, I, I don't know. I, I kind of disagree because, like... She got sent to a doctor's office, so she thought maybe she'd be, like, talking to patients or, like, help, like filling out forms for them or something like that. Like, I, I get Like it. what Kelly gets paid to do? Yeah. I, I mean, I get it, you know. I guess. So, yeah, that's going on the whole episode. Um, and then, like Mark just said, there's a, a woman who comes in yeah. claiming she was in a car accident. A one-car car accident. It was a parked car. Yeah. And it disappeared once I hit it. So. <laughs> but I mean, like, it's so obvious, like, she, she's got a busted lip, and it's like, she obviously got hit. Mm-hmm. But she's lying. They're talking about, like, bruises around her neck, and she, I wore a seatbelt around my neck. <laughs> yeah, the doctor's like, you know, obviously the, the restraint marks are mm-hmm. from hands and not right. an accident. Yep. That's so much worse. Like, I thought she just got hit in the face, but it's like, he was, like, strangling her and holding her down and shit. It's like pretty dark yeah uh, he's an asshole so who looks like a really nice guy they all look like nice guys they got they cast well for this yeah so they you know have to pretend i guess that they kind of believe her but kelly <laughs> kelly's like you know hey we're here if you ever need us and you know she does the whole like here's my number thing yeah um and everybody's all sad about it so, what? They all, they all hang their heads and start crying. <laughs> this doctor, the new doctor, though. It's so funny. Donna's dad is, is supposed to be the doctor there. Yeah, we see him once. And Donna says to Kelly, like, oh, if you need a day, you know, just call the clinic. My dad will give you a day off. Because she broke up with Brandon. Right. So she needs a day off. And she's like, no, I need to be distracted. So she goes in and gets introduced to the new intern doctor. Yeah. So he's got to be, you know, like her age, I guess. Yeah. And, you know, he's like... He looks like a soap a opera star, dude, you know? He does, yeah. Like, I swear to God, his teeth glinted like he was in a toothpaste commercial <laughs> at one point. 
<laughs> he looks like David Hasselhoff from his night, yes. night Rider days. Exactly. So he's, of course, 100% her type. She has a thing for those white coats. I thought you were going to say white guys. <laughs> wow. Well, no. I mean, true, but I've never seen her date a black guy, but. You remember, she's all over her doctor at the uh, at the rehab. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And the burn clinic. Yep. For the same place? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> she has I a think, lot of medical think, shit going on. I think on. each one. I think she liked each one. Right. She really does, though. She's got a thing for doctors. Yeah. So he's like, uh, we could talk about this over drinks because she's like lamenting what's going on. <laughs> what? It's just, it's so weird to like trying to romance someone talking about someone being abused. Right? Yeah. I mean, that's such like, a. Let me, let me let me abuse you in a good way. It's a skeezy kind of thing. I'll show you the only time that a man should put his hands on a woman's Oh, wow. Neck. Okay. <laughs> that's a line. That is a hell of a line there. Um, She turns him down. Yeah, she does. I mean, like, she doesn't say, like, you're not my type, fuck you or anything. No. She's just like, I can't right now or whatever. You know, she's, she yeah. kind of politely says, no, not right now. Yeah. So Valerie picks up on that there's an attraction here and starts diabolically rubbing her hands together and <laughs> cackling in the corner. Seriously. She's like a fucking Svengali. It's, uh, it's insane. But, I did, like, I guess that's her role on the show. I guess. I don't know what her role is. She's becoming cartoonish at times, though. She's a karyakis. Like, and the shit that she does the next day is so stupid. Mm-hmm. Like, she's... I don't understand her... How does she not get caught? I don't know. Like, she totally should. And I don't understand why she's even doing what she's doing. She's trying to push Kelly and this guy together mm-hmm. and telling Brandon about it. Yeah. But she's supposed to be Brandon's friend. Both of these things are hurting Brandon. Yeah. And, like, is she just, like, is she trying to sow chaos? Like, what the fuck is going on? Yeah, her does motivation she, is very unclear. Does she still want Brandon? She's with David. Like, yeah. I don't get it. I don't get it either. And that's the biggest problem with her character is there is no motivation. Mm-mm. And you can't, like, there are some characters maybe where you could say, like, oh, they just like chaos for chaos' sake. Like a fucking supervillain. Sure. Like the Joker or something like that. You could be like, yeah, the Joker's a guy that just wants to fucking to see everybody like running around with their heads, like chickens with their heads cut off. <laughs> right. But it doesn't work with a like this kind of character. It's like she has to have some kind of clear motivation so we can. So at least she seems smart mm-hmm. or seems like she's building to something. It, it, now it just looks like it's just she just fucking throwing whatever it what it really looks like is the writers just writing Mm -hmm. like you can really see the writing and that's the problem yeah i don't i don't like what they do sometimes with these characters but especially hers they make she's inconsistent her character Mm -hmm. is inconsistent wildly inconsistent so anyways though do you think she's trying to hurt brandon i don't know what the fuck she's trying to do Maybe she's trying. Maybe she wants to get revenge for him uh, being a jerk to her. I don't know. Maybe, but like, it seems like she's trying to get him to be like, "Oh, I'm going to move on" or mm-hmm. whatever. Maybe and she's trying to push Kelly into this guy's arms for the same reason to like close everything off. She, it seems very much like she does not want them together. Yeah, he calls the clinic a bunch, and she intercepts the messages and throws them away. Mm-hmm. He sends her flowers, and she replaces the card. Says your secret admirer, and and she like says she's like, hey, just between you and me, it's from this fucking doctor. Yeah, she says that to Kelly, and then like Brandon asks if Kelly liked the flowers and if she got the flowers, and she lies and says that oh yeah, she got the flowers. Yeah, she got the flowers, and he's all like pissed off. He's like, not even a thank you, right? She doesn't ever have to be nice to you again, Brandon. Yeah. He really is being very entitled. Yeah. He's like, I have a right to talk to you. He does say that at one point. Yeah. No, you don't. don't. Like, the second your penis entered Emma's vagina, it was done. Like, your rights and your relationship were gone. Exactly. It's like when you get convicted of a felony. I mean, they weren't even engaged. No. They don't have children. No. Like... I mean, yes, they were living together, but look how fast that got fixed. Yeah. She just moved back in with Donna. Exactly. And Carly and her kid moved out. It all, it's like musical houses. (laughs) But it's Donna and Kelly back in the Malibu beach house. Mm -hmm. 
And together again. That's the true love story, if not out to an <laughs> Right. It's Donna and Kelly. And like David is still dating Valerie. Valerie. But like Noah and Donna get in a fight this episode. Yeah. Because Noah's like, hey, you know, come on. Brandon's just a guy. Mm-hmm. He made a mistake. Maybe Kelly should give him another chance. I mean, it's pretty normal for a guy to fucking cheat on his girlfriend, don't you think, Donna? <laughs> That is so stupid. What an idiot. So, yeah, so she's mad at him. Why would you step right in the middle of this thing? Like, whenever you're, whenever you have friends that are in a couple and they're having a fight, you don't get into their fight with your, with your significant other. Yeah, very dumb. Yeah. But, so then, like, and Steve's been left by Carly. So all these guys are together except David because he's, you know, still happy. Yeah. The fuck was oh david was hanging out with the the band yeah so the boys are all out drinking he sold a song we can mm-hmm. finish david's story real quick he was hanging out with a band like he was doing a i'm gonna fucking follow this band and, and write about their day or whatever and they keep offering him drugs and he's like no thanks well they're being really mean to him too though yeah and then he starts like playing around the piano and they're like oh what's going on and he's like i used to write songs and they're like oh play us one and then we don't hear the song but He's like, yeah, I sold one of my songs to this band. And she's like, oh, who's it about? No, <laughs> like, she says what song. Yeah, I know. It's just, it's funny how, like, she she really hones in on it. And uh, she's like, does it, uh, are there any D's in the title <laughs> of the song? Um, but he's like, oh, just an old song from a long time ago. So, you know, it's just, uh, it's, uh. she's like, is it a fast paced song? Nah, I'm moderate, you know. Like, yeah, like so, he's being very weird about it. Yeah, so, because yeah. it's this love song about Donna. Probably. Obviously. Probably. So, yeah, but I'm kind of worried about David with the drug thing. Like, I think the fact that they keep offering it is supposed to, it you is, know, it is weird. pave the way that that's going to happen again. Yeah, it is weird that they that they brought it up more than once. Bring it up once and have him turn it down. It's like, okay, he's resisting temptation, fine. But bringing it up multiple times... Where he has to say no multiple times, it's like, eh, something's going on. Yeah, I don't, I mean, like, his character's always getting tempted. Yeah. Though. So, Guys like Job or whatever. Who kept getting tempted? Adam and Eve? I, I don't know. know. <laughs> I don't know anything. Everyone in the show's the serpent, and he's <laughs> Eve. Uh, but anyway, like you were saying, the three boys are drinking. Yeah, and... Like, they're just being assholes. Steve is trying to be <laughs> Steve's nice. Being fine. Like, he's he's maintaining that, you know, like. Because they're like, fuck Carly. You know, you, there's plenty of fish in the sea. And he's like, I want that fish. Yeah. He's like, I've had I've had the other fishes. I don't want any other fish. Yeah, he's really <laughs> he's really upset and like sad and stuff. And Noah's like, fuck women. Donna's mm-hmm. mad at me. Who cares? And Brandon's like, yeah, you know, I'm a fucking elephant. Because elephants cheat on their wives or whatever. Which is not even true. And um, he's like, think about tigers. They fucking cheat on their wives, too. I don't even think that's true. Yeah. And um, he's like, we're men. We're sp-. And Noah's like, that's right. And, and they're they're all drunkenly celebrating. Being his, asshole men. Him cheating on. Uh, and then Tim Allen shows up and he's like. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> but Steve literally like turns his back on them while they're acting like that. It's yeah, like, he does. Yeah, like, it is. That's. That is one thing that they do that's visually interesting, I guess, in the episode. Is yes, he is facing the opposite way of them in the shot, which is nice. So, um, Brandon then wanders away from this fucking bullshit. Yeah. To go to Kelly's house. Yeah. And Carly and Donna are there. Kelly's there, and he's like, "I have a right to talk to her." Mm-hmm. He finally does talk to her, like, towards the end of the episode, and he's like, after she goes on her date with the doctor. Yeah, the doctor asks her a second time, which Tiffany Amber Thiessen tells him to do. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, I bet if you ask her again, she'll say yes. Yeah, how do, you, how do you know that? Like, I don't even know, like, how she got that right, but anyway. But yeah, so after her date, she comes back, and Brandon's there, and he's like, hey, what the fuck? Yeah. And she, he's like, he's like, you, you've been ducking my calls. And she goes, what calls? Because she, she hasn't been getting the yeah. messages. And um, he's like, you know, let's just fucking set some ground rules. No games. And she's like, I don't play games with you. But it never comes back. Like, yeah. he should have been, like, 
I don't know. Like, it, it seems like that would have unraveled Valerie's lies. Yeah. I don't think that would have made a difference. But I don't think all of a sudden she'd be like, oh, my gosh, okay. You've been calling? That makes all the difference. Yeah. Or even the flower. I don't think the flowers would make a difference either. No. She was cheated on. She wants space. And, like, you know, there. she's like, I don't know if I'll ever forgive you or whatever. Mm-hmm. It's the classic thing where at the beginning she's like, it's it's not like she says exactly like I just need time, but she's like, I don't I don't know if I'll ever be able to or whatever. Like you know she's she has that slight door open where it's mm-hmm. like a possibility, and then he keeps pushing in the in the conversation. And she's like, no, you know, yeah. like she shuts the whole the door, and that's what happens in situations like this is the person that wronged the other person pushes too hard. Mm-hmm. And then the other person solidifies their opinion yeah. of like, fuck you. That's not how you try to get back together with someone in this situation. Yeah. He's an idiot. He's an asshole and an idiot. He has no redeeming qualities in this episode. No. Oh, and he has gold, road rage. The golden boy. Oh yeah. He almost kills a, a, a mother and two sons. Yeah. Like this lady like cuts him off in traffic. Yeah. She didn't see him. And he fucking follows her, parks his car behind her at a stop sign, and gets out and starts screaming at her Mm -hmm. with her kids in the car. Like, what kind of monster is he? Seriously. Like, that's too far. Like, he wasn't drunk. Yeah, he's like, he's like, she goes, oh, I'm sorry I didn't see you. He's like, yeah, fucking didn't see me. Like, (laughs) he really looked like he wanted to punch her. Yeah. It was ridiculous. And then, like, through the whole episode, Kelly's dealing with this abused woman because she comes back because she got beat again. Yeah. And she's like, Kelly's like, I know what it's like when someone hurts you. Which and is she's a little... Like, oh. mm. She's like, oh, you've been beaten too? And she's like, well, no, emotionally. Like, <laughs> like I wouldn't have gone there, Kelly. No. Ridiculous. I guess she's trying to empathize or whatever, but she does mention that Donna was beaten by uh, fucking, what's his name? Failed art, mm-hmm. failed uh, musician. Yeah, what the fuck was his name? I don't remember. Was it Joe? No. She gets around, huh? For was a virgin. It, was it, uh, what was, what the fuck was his name? Ray Pruitt. Ray! Oh my God, you remembered his last name, too. <laughs> it just Holy came shit. all at once, That's, Ray Pruitt. That is impressive. That's what Ray did, too, with Valerie. <laughs> oh, God. Um, That's what Valerie said. So, somehow she finally convinces this woman, though, like, to go to a shelter. Mm-hmm. Well, now, the first time she got beat, <laughs> are you, she was are there. Are you reenacting it on your hands? <laughs> she's, she's like smacking her hands together. The first time that she <laughs> got what she deserved. No. She was like, she didn't want to leave. She was scared. Yeah. And Kelly's like, don't you have somewhere to go or anywhere you're mm-hmm. safe? And like, obviously she doesn't. That's not the time her husband picks her up, is it? It is. The first, it is. The first time is the time okay. her husband picks her up. So her husband had picked her up, and yeah, he he's like pretending to be nice, mm-hmm. and like they didn't make it out the door. Yeah, exactly. It's like it was like he was like, okay, I have to turn, but I have to do it on camera, so I got to do it in front of you guys. Sorry. <laughs> he's like, how the fuck dare you come into this place? Right. Suddenly he becomes fucking a devil. So the second time she comes back. Mm-hmm. And she doesn't lie this time. She, you know, admits what happened. And, like, it's obvious she has a black eye. And he hit her in the ribs. Yeah. So, yeah, she admits, or she's willing to go to a shelter. And, I mean, that's when they go out, I think, is after that. Yeah. To, like, kind of celebrate. Yeah, it's an aphrodisiac for them. (laughs) Um, But I will say, this episode does a really good job. Mm Mm-hmm. Of explaining, because, like, I have a problem with that sometimes. I mean, not a problem, I guess, but, like, I feel like I'm a fairly empathetic person. It's hard for me to empathize with an abuse victim, like a physical abuse victim of, like, just fucking leave, you know, or, like, you you know, and not in a callous way, and I don't blame the victims at all. But, I mean, what I'm saying is it's hard for me to understand sometimes how... That can happen. Why Why not just leave? And the episode does a really good job explaining through the actress who's playing the yeah. the abused woman of all the reasons, like all the, and they're all logical, rational, you know, reasons why she wouldn't want to leave. Like, or, or why it's, not that she doesn't want to leave, but why it's very difficult to leave. 
But yeah, she's been with him since she was 15. Yeah, and she's afraid that he'll, you know, hurt her or or kill her if she leaves. And, you know, uh, Kelly's like, we're afraid what will happen if you stay, which, you know, is also a valid concern. But, like, you brought up monetary things, mm-hmm. and there there are loads of reasons why women find it difficult to, impos- to near impossible to extract themselves from situations like this. And, you know, it's a lot of it's about control, too. So it's, it's the, the, the abuser is trying to control their life, and that can be hard to get out yeah. from that kind of control. But she does. She does go, and that's good. Yeah. Hopefully, I don't know if we'll see her again or not. I don't know if they'll follow up with her. I don't think so. Or her thing, but. I feel like she's going to be, you know, just in the desert or whatever. Like the rest. <laughs> I hope she makes it out. <laughs> um, There's like an oasis for the people that make it out okay. 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 Well, I mean, Brandon's penis didn't touch her, so. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's the kiss of death. <gasps> he really isn't. He's a monster. Yeah. I'm saying. That's like the whole time you've been saying, but I didn't get it. Now that's, I get it. He's a monster. That's why <laughs> this is so satisfying to me. I don't understand why you're saying. He's literally like watching these episodes with him. He's like gleeful every time Brandon's like being a jerk. He's like, yes, I love it. Because it's like I said, it's like Schadenfreude. It's for so long. He has been a boring, bland, milk toast fucking character. And just like. Golden boy kind of like, uh, it's mind numbing. Now he's an actual asshole. His character's kind of interesting. I don't, um, I can't empathize with what he did though at all. Like, no, I, I don't either, but it just like, it's hard for me to forgive him or like, I don't know. I, I don't like him right now at yeah, all. I don't think you're supposed to. It's upsetting. We've liked him for eight seasons. We have <laughs> seven seasons. I have. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, the last time I liked him was uh, when he was trying to get the, the high school fucking football team to admit they were taking steroids. Wow. <laughs> Goodness. What was that, season two? When he was passing out raisins with his <laughs> parents. Right. Emily Valentine. Oh, my gosh. No, when he did Euphoria. That's probably the last time he was interesting. Yeah. I'll, I'll give you that. Yeah, I remember the show that used to be about, like, oh, Brandon had too much to drink and he drove. <laughs> now he got in trouble. Yeah. Now it's about uh, Valerie rubbing her tentacles together. <laughs> Speaking of, I, I don't think we mentioned that uh, Noah fired Valerie. Yeah. But, yeah, She she's now being forced to do community service and she doesn't have a job. Does she own part of the club still? I don't know. Do like, they have a written agreement? It's a good question. Yeah, it's, it'll be interesting to find out. But she definitely doesn't work there anymore. Donna was so happy when she heard that. Are there any more storylines? I don't think so. I think we're done. I think we just jumped around a lot, but we covered it all. Yeah. It was a good episode. Yeah. So Carly's gone. Kelly's in the Malibu Beach House with Donna. Yep. Steven's brokenhearted. Yeah. Brandon's an asshole. I wonder if Steve's going to find any any love. I hope so. Me too. I don't like that they keep making him like by himself and he's like a nicer person now and I don't want him to be like bitter like Brandon. Steve's become the best character. Yeah, I agree. But anyway, that is the episode for the week, Carol. All right. So you can write us at latep1994 at AWOL.com. Yep. Check out our website at www.retrolatefee.com and share the tapes with your friends. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.